So what I'm going to tell you about is a project that um, I think has transformed um, what essentially looked like a bland sort of classic office building, uh, an office site into something that is uh, amazing and is uh, really attracting wildlife, uh, improving the uh, surrounding environment and actually improving people's well-being, uh, the staff and, and surrounding people. So I've got Adam uh, Cookton also uh, joining me today and there is a third member of the team, uh, Nick Keane, who couldn't join us. And I guess we probably describe ourselves as the core members of that team. And we're basically like-minded individuals. We've been working at this building for a long time. Um, and in fact, I don't know why we haven't done this before, but uh, we are now um, really transforming the, the building, as I said. So um, in terms of the objectives, what we wanted to do, well, we felt we could transform the building for wildlife, uh, but also improve it as a place where you know people wanted to be so that people would enjoy Know, being at, uh, at the building based there. Obviously, there are not many people based there at the moment, but normally they would be. Um, at the same time, contributing to uh, the government's 25-year plan, um, and also just showing really that you know things can get done, um, and showing a bit of environmental leadership. Uh, and as you'll see, that's uh, that's really uh, you know a key point, and has, has had a fantastic success. So. Um, in terms of the the way in which we did this, um, I mean, really, the one of the key things was the, the you know doing a lot of the planning up front, um, and you can see from some of the pictures there that what what we did was actually we broke down uh, the project as a whole into sort of lots of little sub projects. So you know we we knew uh, by talking to our our staff uh, that they told us that they wanted to be able to grow vegetables, that they wanted to see a pond built, they wanted to put up bird boxes. There were ideas for drought tolerant gardens, pollinator gardens, uh, some people wanted an orchard and so on. So we broke down as much of these uh, into projects as we could and, and with their help, um, you know, I suppose identified you know, the, the ones that were most popular. Um, and uh, you know, the, I suppose the key thing to make that happen and make it easy for people then was to kind of do all the boring stuff really. So we made sure that all the things like um, you know, the materials uh, were going to be sourced easily, that we had the funding in place, there was a little bit of funding needed and we had some of that internally, uh, but where possible you know, we used uh, you know, reused materials and so on. Um, and just getting all the permissions in place, so you know, often there were perceived barriers you know, about what we'd be allowed to do or what was you know, permissible on site and actually most of those we, uh, you know, we really just overcome very quickly by, by talking to the right people. So talking of people, um, you know, we, we managed to attract uh, lots of interest from uh, our, our staff and we're lucky enough to be able to spend time um, out uh, from our day jobs uh, once or twice a year to work on any environmental project. So we use that as a way of getting people based at the building, uh, but also other buildings as well, to you know, work on some of the projects. And we got pretty good at, at tailor making projects to according to the size of the team and how much time they had. So we did everything from, you know, as you can see here, building a, a huge bug hotel um, using recycled river gauging boards um, for a team that took about, uh, you know, a day um, through to, you know, small, you know, two hour, uh, almost sort of like a lunchtime or a brief uh, bit of work to suit people that didn't have so much time or only wanted to, you know, perhaps a, a offer it to a small group. And that seemed to work really well by kind of making that sort of flexible approach for people. Um, and we also uh, put in place some sort of regularly occurring things. So we, we started up a gardening club um, and uh, you know, we, one of the things that we did was install some uh, vegetable uh, raised beds uh, and those became really popular and now we have a regular uh, you know, once or twice a week group of people going out during their lunch hour uh, helping to sort of tend that um, and as you'll see in a minute you know, we've got some fantastic produce uh, coming from that but we also as you can see in this picture here uh, started up a regular litter pick and um, that's really attracted a lot of interest and we started off just by litter picking on our own site uh, but one of the things that we started to do was extend that out to the you know the verges and streets around our building and that did a couple of things um, one uh, you know as well as uh, you know vastly increasing the litter we collected I think we collected um, you know nearly half a ton of litter uh, over the year um, it also attracted interest from other people, and um, you know that was fantastic in, in sort of uh, you know, extending our reach. Um, in terms of um, uh, you know, 
extending that reach, one of the things that we did was we, we began to work more closely with Exeter City Council, so we've heard from Nick Mead today already, Devon Wildlife Trust and others, to try and um, influence uh, you know, the, the landscape and the, the, uh, you know, the wildlife around us. And we even started working with some of the other businesses on starting an industrial estate. So, for example, we planted 200 trees with the um, uh, help of Vapormatic nearby. So I just wanted to show you the, the outcomes. I mean, the fantastic wildflower meadow was something that uh, all of our employees loved. And it, you know, they told us it brightened up their day. And um, you can see some of the produce that we've got there from our, our vegetable garden. And we sold that to, in order to raise some money for charity. And some of it was used within our own canteen on site. Uh, and you can also see there the fact that we got great uh, interest from uh, others. This is our chief exec meeting, Adam, by our pond. Um, and through that, uh, and lots of sort of uh, active social uh, media work inside and out, we've managed to now influence other sort of similar projects at sites across the country that we own. But also what we're hoping to do from this project today is influence others to show how easy it is actually with the right thinking and preparation to do something similar at other sites around the city. Um, we're also award winning. We picked up a number of awards, which was fantastic, both uh, from DEFRA and, um, and from others. Uh, so lastly, what did we learn? Well, um, get the framework in place first, make it easy for people to join in, uh, give it the leadership it needs. Um, and we found that by doing that and uh, you know, making that flexible approach I, I described, we were able to engage and empower others. Uh, we had to evolve along the way, as all projects do, so that goes without saying in terms of you know, uh, project barriers or holdups or weather, or whatever it might be. Um, and just being sensible about um, you know, prioritizing you know, what's easily achievable over perhaps some of the things that would, would be lovely to do, but perhaps need a lot more uh, input and planning up front. And lots and lots of shouting about it and spreading the word has been key to that, that uh, project. I think lastly, what I wanted to leave you with, I suppose the ask from us is, we really wanted to show you what we've achieved and it's, uh, it's been amazing what we've done in just a year. We would love for you to think about how you could perhaps uh, transfer some of that learning and some of those outcomes to uh, your business or your community project. And we'll be really happy to help you with that, either in the workshop or afterwards.